How do there guys, welcome back to Edgar TV. Today we're going to be talking prize money and I'm joined today by the 2020 Premier League champion Glenn Durrant who's going to let us know what you actually won when you won that Premier League. Now, we know you got £250,000 for lifting the trophy. Yeah. We know you got £25,000 for topping the league. Yeah. You also got a bonus as well from the manufacturer. Yeah, like I said, it, it, it's a... Difficult interview to, to answer specifics because it wouldn't be fair on management, but I'll be really honest and purely the fact that if you go into a company's house mm. uh, and you look at my accounts on there, you can obviously see net gross figures on there. Um, but with sponsors and everything, uh, it totaled close to 300,000. Nice. So what we're going to do today, we're going to look at those deductions. So the first of all, the £275,000, the People who watch this channel and seen these sort of videos before know there's a PDPA levy. Yeah, obviously before I became a PDPA director, as a player, you, you see that 2%, you're like, oh, girl, especially when you're winning something like 275. So yes, the first deduction that covered was that 2%. Hotels, is this covered by the PDC or do you do yeah. that yourself? Uh, like I said, we're going to come to management next, but under the Premier League rules, and I'm sure when we'll see the darts will be very similar, the PDC will cover uh, your hotel, so that was nil. Travel, getting to and from the venues? Management, like I said, I, I believe I had the best manager in the world, and uh, yeah, I was first class on trains, I was... Uh, it, you know, aeroplanes, a seat one in, everything. You know, you do live the high life when you're in that Premier League bubble. So all that cover was cost uh, was fine by management. So if the management are going to absorb all that cost, I'm guessing you've got to give a percentage of. Yeah, that. like I said, I mean, there's players out there. It's a great subject right at the moment because we were chatting about it last night because I've been working with Scott Mitchell all week, and uh, for a manager taking on a challenge to a player right now. They'd be losing money. Mm. The numbers he was posting, because uh, he looks after himself, was like, whoa, I, I want, and you've got to be winning challenge to us. As a manager, you are investing in somebody for the future. So they'll make no apologies that they'll be taking between, I would say, 15% to as much as 50%. Uh, and I was with a manager who uh, there was no negotiations. I felt he'd done a, an unbelievable job for me anyway. So I, I was in I was in the heart of the round about the twenty percent mark. A lot of the management now are doing it on um, percentage based. So if you get to the final, you pay seven percent, seven and a half percent. Get to the semis, ten percent. So that's sort of quite new at the moment. But yeah, that's a, most of my earnings, I was losing between 20 to 30%, which most players would do that. Ultimately as well, that was the risk absorbed by the manager as well. Yeah, the manager sort of was de de uh, took me on as a BDO player where he was never going to make money. So he uh, invested in me and would take a, a percentage of the Welsh Open. You know, I say the Welsh Open. I mean, there's a funny story that he picked three competitions, three big Opens, I said, and I, and I kept the rest. And he picked the England Open, the Welsh Open, and the something Open. And I won all three. So, uh, yeah, the three that he picked. So, yeah, so the, before we started, oh, management, why do players give them 15% to 50%? Well, you know, there's, there's underlying issues as well there that they may have invested a hefty few thousand pound in getting them to there so I had no problem in giving my you know my, my uh, amount of lump sum to, to, to my management. Other costs I mean it's not free being out on the road you're going to be eating out you've got to get there two days before because you've got media and you've got yeah. Premier League. Day. I mean you can look between 17 weeks but with all media and you're looking at around about 20 sort of weeks um, traveling on a Tuesday on the first one getting there on a Wednesday the majority so you're looking at food and drink. So we're looking at about three thousand. Yeah, yeah. So we're looking at. I think. I think on the expenses. I mean, like I said, everything's on company sales. I think on your expenses, you you claim round about sixty quid a day for food and drink, mm. don't you? So I mean, you'll know that with with your return. So you know, that that you were probably looking at round about three grand for the Premier League. 17 week process. Tax wise, are we talking 20%? Well, yeah, obviously, I'm a limited company, so yeah, 20%. But the years I was winning the Premier League, I'll have gone into super tax. Mm -hmm. um, and if I'm being big headed here, I'm not, I don't mean to be, but there was a period in 2019 and 20 where I'd get messages from my management 
just put 40 grand in your bank, just put 50 grand in your bank, just put 275 grand. You know, there was a period there where you just like, you know, just like money was, what on earth is happening here? But all that is pretty, it's gross. Mm -hmm. It's gross returns. Then, like I said, then the, the money would then pass to your management. You would pass then to uh, the, the VAT uh, starts coming into it. And then obviously the tax man as well. And I, I went all the way back to Phil Taylor, of course, as my hero. And every pound you earn, you really should be putting 50 pence aside. And, you know, that's, that's sort of like your good manage, management costs your tax uh, and um, yeah just put a little bit away there so yeah it's suddenly think you know people think god you want th you know a gross 300,000 but when we start looking at the figures it, it was nowhere near that. I've worked it out at about take home what you would have kept from that 300,000 180. Yeah yeah that's a 175 between 175 and 200 but at the time you're not scrutinizing the figures mm. I was just, there was just lump sums going in, semi-final of the match play, semi-final of the Grand Prix, uh, quarter-final of Ali Pali, then you're in Premier League, then Covid come and, you know, then we started playing behind closed doors and, yeah, there was a period there where there was just huge amount of money going in, but again, on company's house there, you suddenly then get a tax bill for, for 80,000 quid, so, uh, hence the reason, you know, I was always good with money, you remember it. I was pays your earn. I, I worked in housing for 30 years and, uh, you know, I got a wage like most people watching now and my mm. tax was included on there. So, um, yeah, you've got to do it right. Hence the reason I joined the PDPA as well, because I don't want young players making the mistakes because you do have to look after it. And I see... Adrian that, Lewis. Yeah, I see, I see dark players just um, buying big cars, big houses and huge mortgages. I know I was better. This is an important line. I know I was better as a dart player when I wasn't worried about mortgages and money. Mm. Yeah. What about the spin-offs? Mm. Because I'm sure when you win the Premier League, everyone wants to buy a Glendon yeah. dart or a Glendon yeah. shirt. Was yeah. Did the spin-offs go through the roof yeah. at that point? Yeah, they did. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, I would get 10 frame shirts made. Uh, 10 were sold within an hour. Uh, I used to make round about two hundred pound, two hundred and fifty pound per shirt. Um, so you know the spin-offs are really good. I mean, I was lucky, inverted commas, to win the Premier League because it was behind closed doors. It was different. The only player to ever win the Premier League and turn round to no crowd, <laughs> but I didn't get no World Series of darts. Yeah. So the spin-offs because of COVID, I didn't go to Australia because I mean, you know the story. A week after winning the Premier League. I'm not even the best Durant in the family, you know. I've, I've quoted that line is so much. You know, someone was looking down on me the day I won Premier League because I knew something had, something was wrong then. So even if I'd have got the spin-offs, then there's the question that I guess people are talking about in relation to Peter right now. Would he have gone to Australia? Would he have gone to Bahrain? Would he have gone there because obviously my form just capitulated. One of the things I get a lot in the comment section on YouTube is people talking about sponsorship deals and how they work. So, would I be right in saying you'd have been on a deal like you'd get like a royalty the more you dart yeah. sell? You get like a small percentage of that sale? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and in 2019-20, they were, they were amazing. Amazing. I, you could argue it was like an annual salary for when I was working just full time. And I, I believe I'm with the best dart manufacturer in the world you know signing for them was like signing for Nike as an athlete mm. and uh, yeah you know if, if you've negotiated well where your manager comes in I ain't a businessman if my dart manufacturer had come to me and said we'll pay you one pence a year I'd have signed it <laughs> because it was the fact of putting that company on my shirt um, so when my manager goes in and says you know we've negotiated this deal he's a businessman so you need, you know, I'm not having people slagging off management because I wouldn't have got the deals if I was a, a one-man band. It can be done. You look at the Peter Wright of this world, Damon Hetter of this world, you know, it's just the player and the wife and they're doing incredible uh, business decisions themselves. But I have no issues with management. I have no issues with paying my way. I think there's a... Um, you get in football, don't you? An agent knows yeah. that if they're going to play you in the first team every week, you're worth this to the club, yeah. where the player might not know what anybody else's value is. So yeah. that's kind of yeah. the manager knows to position you in relation to his other players, I guess. But they are businessmen. I mean, they can sign a player on 50% for 10 years, and all of a sudden you get through Q school this year, 
and you're looking at your contract and you've got eight years of giving your management 50%. And I can think of a couple of players who were good enough to have a, a big detached house now and they're nowhere. Mm. Uh, so you've got to be very, very astute as well. Timing's great in darts, whether it's on the dart board or the, some of the decision processes. There's a lot of outgoings that are out there. Um, but if you're a top 16 player where you may be coming to next in this interview, if you're a top 16 player right now, you are going to earn some serious buns. Does it? Is it quite relevant, is it, in regards to sort of like those royalties? Is it like when you was at the top, you was getting loads and now it's just fell off? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's quite it, relevant to performance. It's, it's, he it's heavily reduced and, you know, you're going to get some players that are get a generation dart, you know, generation one, two, three, you know, because... You know, they are the biggest sellers in the world, you know, and uh, and rightly so. If you're not relevant, who's going to buy the darts? You know, I've just, I do a lot of academies now and I go to them and, uh, you know, they want to throw a, a Michael Van Gerwen dart, they want to throw a Luke Littler dart. I mean, his shirt sales and darts will be just going through the roof. Over right £200 now. I saw him going for eBay. Yeah. Luke yeah. Littler darts. Yeah, so that's it. He's relevant. He is... He is the man, he, you know, and that's that. That's the thing right now. When you accept that, and you'll never get one quibble or query from me. When it was good, it was blooming marvelous. Yeah. <laughs> so lots of extra there on top of your Premier League. But in regards to what did Glenda and take home for winning the Premier League? About one eighty. One hundred and eighty. Done in the voice of no other referee. Catch you soon, guys, for some more Edgar TV. Do the thumbs up. Oh, I'll let you do it. Yeah, I, yeah. I used to win the Premier League as well. <laughs> now, now I'm standing doing this. <laughs>